Hi all, I'm Dan Smigrod, founder of the We Get Around Network Forum. Today is Wednesday, March 3rd, 2021, and you're watching WGAN-TV Live at 5. We have an awesome show for you today. Introduction to Pocket Buildings, how Matterport service providers can make money with Pocket Buildings, and we have exactly the right subject matter expert to help us on this topic today, Greg Moulton. Uh, Greg is the co-founder and senior vice president of Pocket Buildings. Hey, Greg, good to see you. Good to see you, Dan. Nice to be here with everyone. Hi, hi everyone out there. And, and, and a special hello to those watching WGAN TV Live at 5 on the Pocket Buildings Facebook page. Greg, give us the big picture. What is Pocket Buildings? Yeah, so Pocket Buildings is a, is a visual platform um, that allows you to organize and share all the details about commercial real estate, um, allowing users to transact uh, faster, develop, and manage um, all in a timely fashion. So um, maybe, Dan, is okay, can we step back, maybe talk about the problem a little bit and, and what we saw in commercial real estate? Sure. What, what problem does Pocket Building solve, Greg? So my business partner and I, Brian, um, working through various organizations in commercial real estate, realized that visual data was really spread all over the place. Um, there wasn't a consistent manner where it was stored. Um, it wasn't easily shared. Um, when you did get the file that you needed, perhaps it wasn't in the right uh, file type or the, you didn't have the license to open it. So Brian and I really kind of honed in that uh, in on that problem and designed pocket buildings with that in mind. A common platform that allows folks to organize and, and quickly share all the visual information about commercial real estate. Uh, awesome. How about we jump into a demo? Sometimes I think it's a little bit easier to get our, our hands around understanding something if we take a look at a demo. So could you show us the, the front end of pocket buildings? Absolutely. I'm just going to do a real quick screen share here, Dan. And while Greg is getting set up for Matterport service providers, stay tuned. Uh, we're going we're gonna to tell, show how to make money with pocket buildings. Uh, but before we get there, I think it's really kind of helpful to really understand what pocket buildings is. Uh, and that's what Greg's going to uh, demo for us. Thanks, Dan. Given that we are a visual platform, it usually makes more sense when people actually open it up and see it. Um, so we are 100% web-based uh, application uh, built on uh, built on the cloud. So our back end is uh, backed by AWS. Um, everything that we do here is completely visual in nature. So when you log in to Pocket Buildings, on the left-hand side, you'll notice the, the map feature over here. On right, uh, we organize everything by portfolio. We get that question a lot. How is your application structured. Um, had one of the members of the network reach out to me yesterday and said, hey, are you organized by building, by floor? How do you do it? Very simple. At a high level, um, we're based on portfolio, buildings making up a portfolio, and then content that's, that's uh, assigned to each individual building. And then I'll walk you through exactly how we go about sharing either any of those, entire portfolio, building, or just subsets of information. So over here on the right-hand side, um, we've got a couple of different portfolios. This is my demo account. Um, you can always turn the map off, pop in um, to a fully populated portfolio using visual cues and the address to actually jump into a building here. So you can see I've got uh, a portfolio with 43 buildings, one with only five. I am the quote unquote owner of all of these portfolios. As we move down below, we'll see that I've been invited to other buildings. So you can maintain different levels of permission inside of any portfolio. So, so, normally so, makes so Greg, before you go on, if we, we could just go back to that portfolio page, because I, I, I think we just need to do a little translations for, for the benefit of Matterport service providers. So mm -hmm. I might be a, uh, a leasing agent and mm -hmm. these are all the buildings that I uh, I'm presently involved in leasing. I might be selling buildings. These might be the buildings that are for sale. Mm -hmm. uh, I might be a REIT where I physically own these buildings. I might be a property management company where I manage these properties, even though I don't own them. So it can be organized at the big picture level of from one building to five buildings, to one continent, to multiple continents. Absolutely, so the beauty of the system is that we do everything per building. The way you organize your portfolios is completely up to you. You know, we've got REITs that organize by geo, right? So North America, East, Central, West. 
we have folks, brokers using it that have an active portfolio and then a passive portfolio that they're not doing anything on, but they're just retaining the information. Um, like you said, we have property managers that break down their uh, buildings into different tenants. Um, one of your users reached out to me yesterday again and asked like, hey, if I have different clients, can I give them access or can I set it up in such a way that they only see the buildings that are in their portfolio? And that is really the beauty of the system. You can have a client um, assigned to a single portfolio. You could break it down if you had 20 buildings and do 20 individual portfolios if you'd like to do it that way or restrict um, access and invite users only to the building. So again, we designed it to be as flexible as possible to deal with all those use cases. Okay, so you've covered so much in, in, a, in a few sentences. So I think I'd like to slow you down a little bit and, yeah. and say first, what kind of digital assets can pocket buildings house? Yeah, absolutely. And, and maybe it makes the most sense. Again, I'll jump in and show you uh, typically how we categorize um, all the different assets. So for us, it really always is about the visual content that's out there. We'll, we'll, I'll deep dive into each of the sections here and show you how it operates. But the, we designed the front page of the building, right? Since we're, we're mostly all about the building here to have that social media, that building profile to it. It's common, right? It's what people are used to seeing. I think most users out there are pretty comfortable in a LinkedIn or Facebook environment and making changes and edits and ads is very easy to do. So the overview page, was designed to allow users the ultimate flexibility to decide what they display on this page. And it is restricted by users. So if you're only invited to let's say the photos for the 37th floor, that's all you're gonna see when you land on here. But to answer your specific question, Dan, about what types of content that we, um, that we handle, number one, um, photos of course, right from any sort of, uh, any sort of device, PNG, JPEG, doesn't matter. The nice thing about our system, and I'll show you here when we get to sort of the back end demo, um, everything that we support is drag and drop, click to upload. We're not looking to make it exceptionally difficult for folks to uh, to deliver data here. Very well, exciting. Let's stay on the digital assets and we'll, and, and we'll go into the, the back end talking about what it is you can do and such. But I, I wanna get a kind of an overview to, to see, well, if I go to a, pocket buildings page for a specific property, what are all the available digital assets that are all pulled together? Yep, so photo, JPEG, PNG, et cetera. Uh, video, we handle in a variety of ways. So both MP4 recorded video, so those beautiful marketing videos that folks are doing. Uh, we do support uh, YouTube and Vimeo here as well. It's as simple as dropping in a URL. Everything launches from the platform, so you're never leaving. So any content that you put up on, you're never directed to another location. It's always gonna launch in here. Um, 360 photos. So we will recognize and process this as a 360 image. We've created a viewer that allows you to navigate around the space. Um, we wanted that real specifically for raw data that folks were trying to create virtual tours and having the ability to go back and reference it down the road. Of course, we mentioned the, the ability to have uh, Matterport um, inside of the platform. Very easy for us in the early days as we started really on building plans, which I'll jump to here in a second, but folks coming back and saying, hey, it's those Matterport virtual tours and then branching out into Ryko 360, Hollow Builder, um, as well as support for some of the live streaming stuff. There is a construction component to what we do. So we're happy to support Oxblue and their live streaming construction cameras. Um, also on the content side, as it is specifically there, one of the early challenges that we set out that was a real hassle for us and for commercial real estate is the dreaded .dwg or the CAD file from our friends over at Autodesk. Um, you can upload, access, and view any CAD file on our platform without an Autodesk license. So building plans um, in .dwg or PWF, uh, PDF we support. Um, 3D models, Revit, SketchUp, um, as well uh, visual content there. Um, and Visio. So on the visual cues and the visual data we support there. Two other areas that I'd like to point out um, from content, um, standard PDF and documents. We're also always going to provide this JPEG, this, uh, this preview image over here on the left. And we support a full Microsoft Office um, suite. So your Word, your Excel, and your PowerPoint here. Um, one of the reasons that we really want to join the network, Dan, is we are very curious in particular when we get down to this, uh, this virtual tour area, right? I think your and I's first conversation was about 
you know, the myriad of uh, providers that are out there right now. We're always looking to stay ahead and understand what our customers want, what's new, what's coming, because undoubtedly they're saying, hey, I may be acquiring a portfolio that's all Matterport now, but some existing assets have Ryko 360 tours and we've got to be able to support that. So for us, really focusing um, on the virtual tours as we move into this year is going to be a, uh, a big, big task in finding different ways to support all the, all the providers that are out there. Awesome. Uh, point clouds? We do do point clouds. Yeah, the, the need for those is a little bit less now. That's uh, more coming through the construction and development side of what we do. So the ability for you to upload a huge file, many times they are, you know, anywhere from five to 300 gigs. So massive, massive files. Think about trying to email that. Uh, we can provide um, an interface here for you to upload a point cloud and then sort of view it um, in real time. It, honestly, it's become a little bit less of a focus uh, recently as there isn't too much detail inside of a point cloud. It's the raw data that uh, folks use to build the models. And is there a map associated with this, uh, this listing, this property? So when you're on the overview page uh, here and we'll follow you through, uh, we'll always, uh, we reference back to Google Maps, the address when you first create the building, we'll always reference the location on the map. And then we'll have the ability for you to dive into that Google map. Our map feature here from the main screen on the left uh, is the way that if you're not sure which portfolio that building is in. So let's say you're managing like me, I probably got 25 different portfolios here. You can always use the map feature on the left to quickly identify. So I know it's in Boston area and then I can dive directly into a building from the map feature over here on the left. Okay, great. If you could take us back to that uh, pocket buildings. Yeah, I'm noticing on the left side that there's some other kinds of content Absolutely. Yep. So I'll walk you through these real quick. So number one, given that we were dealing with YouTube links, Vimeo links, Matterport tour links, folks were coming to us and saying, hey, one of our biggest challenges is actually saving links, right? I've got links to um, our marketing page or our website, um, safety procedures, right? Uh, amenities in the area, local municipalities. So we wanted to create a way that folks could just copy paste the URL give it a name and then display it in a very visual way that would allow users to then access this information at their leisure. So again, it's all part of that curating the experience when someone visits your building um, remotely. Also um, on the detail section here, we wanted a place where users, cause they were telling us in the early days, hey, I've got to look or log into three different databases or services to find just basic facts about my building, right? type, gross area, right, parcel of land, operational details. So we wanted to be aware and provide a space for users to be able to house this information and then quickly access it, right? I, the phone number, the website, the email address for the building, a quick description, right? The ability for folks to quickly find that information all in one spot. Um, file manager, again, is where everything lives. It's where you can search, where you can sort, where you can bundle, where you can tag, the ability for you to do different things um, inside of the section here. We do allow posts for collaboration. So the ability to leave notes, um, talk with folks through here, leave valuable information for the folks that need it. And then of course, on a restricted view, given that I'm the administrator of this account, the settings tab. So full access to the building, which users are invited to the building, what level I can add, move, or delete. And a feature that I know Dan will talk about a little bit later here is our public page offering and how we create that. And then finally, what I'd like to point out when it comes to tabs, and this is our big finish as they say, right? When we talk about the application. We have asset managers, portfolio managers, development professionals, photographers, videographers, um, all different types of real estate uh, professionals that are using our platform. And undoubtedly what they came uh, back to us and said, hey, I need a way to organize it in a way that makes sense to me, right? I wanna organize by room, by suite, by floor, by department, by year, right? By job that I'm working on right now. So for us, what we wanted to do was create an area where you could organize, truly organize all this data and then be the share portal so we created content bundles, right? It's a spot where you can upload information, right, directly to a bundle. You very quickly give it a name, create it. You can pull information that's already uploaded to the building. So you can curate that view. You can drag and drop more, 
But where really the rubber meets the road for us and the value in the platform is not only organizing, right? It's in the sharing component. So I'll point out over here on the share side, the ability for you to share a portfolio, which includes every building and every piece of content, normally only appropriate for a couple individuals that are the owners of the account. You can share a particular building. So in your case, um, or the folks that are watching us today, if you had a client, you wanted to give them access to everything in the building that you've created, but not the portfolio, you go to the building level. Most common use for us is the content bundle. So I wanna share a very specific set of information with a couple individual users. I wanna go over my marketing materials, my beautiful photos, my videos, my virtual tours, everything's done. You drop into your content bundle section here. It's as simple as inputting an email address. You choose the level of access that they have. We've got a couple which we can deep dive and talk about later. And then you hit add. That auto generates an email. They're then invited to the building and they're restricted to only that content bundle. So you can restrict access to what content that folks um, can view when they log into the building. So I know that was fast. Dan, I'll take a breath. Any questions about anything? That yes, be, yes. Before you, before you move on, if you go, if, I'm just staring at the word posts, P-O-S-T-S. Yep. Can you give us uh, one or three different scenarios of what your vision for posts? Yeah, um, given that we organize and that we share, collaborating is a big part of what we do. So in the post section here, um, and we were really careful about this in the early days. Um, we thought about integrating a messaging system into there so folks could communicate through like a LinkedIn messenger. Undoubtedly, the feedback we got on that there are too many messaging apps out there, right? We're using Slack, we're using LinkedIn, we're using chats, it's just, it's too much. So what we wanted to do was create a post section where folks could basically leave notes for folks, right? So, hey, I've completed the 37th floor virtual tour. I've posted it to the content bundle section. Hey, Mr. Owner, when you get a chance, can you please log in, view the details, make sure that, it's, that it meets your requirements and go. We've got development teams that are leaving notes in there as well. Hey. You know, uh, permitting is being submitted on Friday. We need everything uploaded to the bundle on Monday. Can folks ensure that that's there? And then general just contact information, right? There's, uh, when we talk about public pages a little bit later, there's a part of our platform that is used for leasing sales activity. Folks want to be able to be very clear about who to contact beyond just the building contacts over here on the right. They want an area where they can leave their contact information behind so that there's no confusion about who to talk to. Uh, is, is there any application in that post re re related to um, uh, fire flood damage? I'm the general contractor. I've come in. I, or I'm, I'm the remediation company. I've come in and I've, I've left notes. I'm not sure for whom. Maybe it's for the general contractor. Maybe it's for the, uh, the exactimate person that's going to do the estimate on the insurance. I, I, you're smiling. Is there, I, is there I, I'm smiling because Dan, I feel like you're sitting in some of our product development meetings um, that, that you can absolutely use the general post feature for that right now. What we have found is that it's not appropriate that folks that log into the building maybe see every conversation that's going on inside of that building. So one of the enhancements that we're focused on this year in the post section is tying posts to specific tasks or specific bundles where it's contained in that set of information and not out there for general consumption. Ah, so I, I had just assumed that the posts uh, were related to the content bundle that I shared. So this is the content bundle re related to fire and flood damage and all the people who are associated. Nope, those posts are actually system-wide. Correct, yeah. Okay. So the, what you describe is a coming soon feature that we, uh, that we are work actively working on right now. The post, as you see it right now, is more for general posting about the information of the building. Got it. Okay. So uh, uh, some new features coming. Uh, interesting, because I just thought there was a whole conversation opportunity for uh, around a bundle for, mm -hmm. for, for that constituency. So that's interesting. Okay. Um, you started to take us to the uh, uh, to the top left, to, excuse me, to the top right corner. You were going to show pocket buildings, public pages, I believe. Yep, absolutely. So when we originally uh, designed the platform, 
then all conversations say with we thought, right? We thought what would everyone would use it in a way that was very restrictive, right? We're only going to use this for internal sharing. Maybe we would invite some outside parties every now and again to upload data back to us to provide content to us. Um, what we got was pretty much universal feedback that says, look, we've never seen visual content for commercial real estate and the vast uh, amount that you can handle in one location before, which was really appealing. And they said, we have instances where, you know, we are our broker that we're working with is showing the property. We need to get some of this information. And they said, look, they could potentially be blasting that out to a couple thousand people in the market that they know are actively interested in properties. We don't want to go input 3000 email addresses into a content bundle. They said, look, could you create a system that would allow us to expose this publicly on a public facing URL? We decide what goes out there and then we can turn it on, turn it off at any time, customize it. So pocket buildings are, our public pages came out of that. Great. It's really simple. To an actual page? Could we see one? I, I can't because I'm logged into the system right now. What I ah. can't do, Dan, is I'll show you after the call. It is the classic experience that you're going to see here. Nothing is going to look different other than the settings tab is going to be removed because we're not going to let people do settings. It's the classic experience that you would see, but you've decided what materials to put out there. So number one, you can customize the URL to anything you want it to be. So it's afterwards, I'll send it to you app.pocketbuildings.com backslash building, and then you customize it. You can create a custom description of the building. Many times this is used for uh, sales or leasing activities. So they wanna put some very specific information in there. And then over here on the right-hand side, it's as simple as turning on what you want to expose and what you don't wanna to expose to the public. So all my bundles, all our details page that we showed you, our post section, and then when you activate bundles, it'll actually allow you to go and toggle on or off different content bundles so you expose what's out there to the world. Does that make sense? Sorta. Of. Is that panel that I'm looking at published content going to be public? Yes. Anything here that's in the on position with the blue, that is now exposed. If you went to this URL. Yes, yes. yes. But does that column actually show up where, where it shows toggle on? No, no. That panel no, comes no. off. Settings is completely hidden. When you're on our public page, you never see the setting. Ah, so published content is actually considered part of settings. And so we wouldn't see that on a public page. Correct. We're, right. we're, is there a public page today as an yeah, example? This, this public page lives right now. Anyone that's on the call can go to this link right now and they can view the, you can view the public page. Okay. So I'm going to go to pocketbuildings.com forward slash Nope, I'll, uh, why don't I do this? I'm gonna drop you a note, Dan, inside with the URL. You can go to that URL, it's app.pocketbuildings.com. Ah, app, okay, let's do that. So app.pocketbuildings.com forward slash buildings forward slash PB for pocket buildings, PB HQ hyphen demo. And it's taking me to a page presently that says create your account. So I imagine I could create a free account and then I would be able to see this page. Yeah, you, know, you don't, you shouldn't even need to. Let me uh, hang on one second here. I'll open up another incognito browser. It's just that I'm logged into the system. So if I yeah. try and view okay. this, you will see it. But let me very quickly here, let me see, Dan, if I can minimize this. And then can you see that page on your? Nope, still asking me to log in. Can you see this on my screen, Dan? Oh, yes, yes. Yep. So you'll notice it's almost the same exact experience that you saw before, but we've removed the settings, Tom. Um, but you still get access to everything else out here on the left. So this is a complete public facing page. This is out there right now. All the content is viewable. I'm just confused because I'm trying to get to that page and I can't get there. I, I, uh, did you try clicking on the uh, hyperlink in the uh, chat on Zoom? No, let me do that. Okay. Ah, I see what I was doing. I, I didn't put in an HTTPS. That was probably my problem. 
And as soon as I do that, great, I'm there. If you don't mind, I'm going to share my screen for yep. a moment. Absolutely, I'll stop sharing. Okay, so I'm going to go over to share. And so I think you can see my screen now. Mm -hmm. yep. Okay, great. So uh, so for, for those that want to go take a look at this page, app for app, app dot pocketbuildings.com forward slash building forward slash P is in Paul, B is in boy, HQ. That's PBHQ hyphen demo. Mm -hmm. And uh, so that page looks nice, clean, simple. Uh, so anything that, that you've chosen to make uh, av available here in terms of assets, I can see. Correct. Yep. And I'll post that link in the, uh, in the forum um, after this, uh, after this call. Okay. So that's the, we get around network forum, W G A N forum.com. And then uh, uh, Greg, mm -hmm. you have this amazing pocket buildings has this amazing feature for, for looking at files like SketchUp and mm -hmm. Revit. Yep. How about taking us into a demo? So th this is this is I think is, is pretty cool for Matterport service providers because you hear of SketchUp files and Revit files, uh, and you unless you have a license, you can't actually open the file. So it's kind of this mystery to you. But I um, anyway, why, why don't you describe this awesome feature that uh, that Pocket Buildings has, Greg? I, I, I've personally lived this experience. So I worked for Digital Realty for a while. We were leasing um, data center space around the world. My business partner, Brian, that's where we met each other originally. And we kept running into this issue over and over again, where the engineering team would set, we'd ask for the floor plan of the suite, right? Hey, this customer wants to know where they're going to be in the suite. They want to do the layout of their cage. And someone, an engineer, would send us a .dwg file, and we would go and open it and get the errors that most people do. You don't have the software to open this. So we thought it was completely restricted to the data center industry, did not realize you know, what was going on. Fast forward, we started working and um, actually being a content creator and creating CADs for folks and ran right back into the same issue. We're like, this is insane. There has to be a better way to do it. Um, so we worked with Autodesk, and, and it's funny because it's one of the most popular features on our platform, um, is the ability to open a CAD and take measurements. But before I even show that, what I wanted to point out was um, folks were wasting and spending a lot of time. If you've ever seen a, a CAD, right, they bury it in a Dropbox folder. They give it a name. Who knows what they named it, if it was named correctly. And then many times there's, you know, it could be a couple hundred drawings of a, of a particular building. And you're kind of relying on what someone was doing uh, in the naming convention there, right? So what we wanted to do was provide a way to create these thumbnail images over here on the left so that you could quickly identify the actual CAD that you wanted to open. So right away say, oh, that is the plan. That is the office floor plate. It's how we wanted uh, to see it, right? It's got some office spaces and some uh, office numbers on it. So number one, right, we did some things with viewing. So the ability for you to do that. But most importantly, right, there's this whole world of architects, engineers, and contractors that have Autodesk licenses, right? They can log in, they can view, measure very precise. Well, the rest of us may want to know, is the wall on, on Office 105, is that 40 feet? Is it 80 feet? Is it 60 feet, right? So we've got the ability to jump in at point and click and do measurements inside of a CAD. Now, so now you've got the ability to glean information from the drawing as well. So not only open it, but be able to have that valuable conversation, right? Folks, they'd say it all the time, like, gosh, I wish I had that. I'm manually using a notebook to take measurements with a ruler on a paper plan and then convert that over using my scale. They're like, that's insane. We can do this right now. So again, bringing visual data to the masses. And then we wanted to provide the same thing with Revit's. I'm sure your community sees it now, right? architects, engineers, designing in 3D, designing in Revit, right? You've got augmented reality, virtual reality companies that are allowing folks to literally zoom in and walk through these buildings from home, right? All you need is a, a VR headset and you can get into it. Well, we kind of thought it was crazy that many of the people that need to make the decisions about these buildings don't even have the ability to open up the model and say, hey, you know what? 
the architect is done with the lobby remodel. Can we see what it looks like, right? And their architects are converting this into video and then sending the video and po posting it over when, hey, it's like, look, I wanna consume this and view it on my own time. So you can jump in uh, you know, to a specific area and right on your desktop have the ability to take a look at the lobby remodel and say, hey, you know what? That's great. Stairwell, again, anybody know how wide it is? Are we meeting, you know, are we even close to meeting requirements in there? So you can drop lines and then you can interact and do things like, hey, you know what I would really like to do is have the ability to turn things on and off here. So if I go over a model browser and say, hey, you know what? The structural columns over there on the right really restricting access to that hallway or what is it going to look like if I turn those off? So we're not making any, people sometimes freak out when they see this and they're like, oh my God, did I just delete the structural columns? The answer is absolutely not. You've turned a layer off. We're not allowing you to make any changes to the underlying model. We're just saying that sometimes different folks need to have access and do different things inside these models. And we're providing that capability. Yeah, pause there for a moment, Greg, because I we just have to take a moment. I am literally tingling looking at this demo right now. Mm -hmm. So for Matterport service providers, the magic is as we scan a space, to create this digital twin, the, the, the walkthrough experience, we're also capturing the depth data, which is available to us as a Matterport Matter Pack. And that's not always obvious to a Matterport service provider, kind of like, well, okay, well, what's that? And what would I do with that? Okay, well, stay with me here. So that Matterport Matter Pack that you can order in Matterport Workshop, download that, uh, you can certainly uh, reach out to me if you'd like. I'll connect you with a company that will convert that Matterport Matter Pack, the cloud, the uh, the point cloud that comes in that Matterport Matter Pack, that data, to a Revit file, a .rvt file, a SketchUp file, a .skp file, uh, uh, and, and, uh, any any CAD file that you need. So the the magic for a Matterport service provider is you're already scanning, you're creating the data that's necessary for an architect or a space planner to either use SketchUp or, or Revit, these two, two amazing uh, programs. Uh, uh, but the, I think the, 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 what, one of the things that, that, that strikes me is that that's all conceptual for a Matterport service provider, that you have the ability to capture data that gets converted to a Revit file that you can't see until now, which is quite amazing so that you can actually see the scan data that you've captured converted to, let's say a, in this case, a Revit file of, uh, and then how that Revit file can be used uh, at the most simple level of just understanding either the measurements of a space or the area, maybe you could do the area of a space, uh, or to re remove uh, a column in this case. So this is this is like this is like I, me personally. I think this is pocket building secret sauce. Is the ability to look at CAD files like this and not only look but interact with the way that that maybe. A majority of the people that this kind of content gets shared with just have a need to do simple measurements or calculations of area. Mm -hmm. Yeah, and and Dan, while while you were talking, I just popped open a CAD and use our quick uh, the measurement tool there to do a square area of that office. Again, right? Is this to Boma standards? No, it is not to Boma standards. We can't claim that, but it sure is nice to know that that office is a little over a thousand sixty square feet, right? And that it's. Is it 2,000? Is it 3,000? Is it 400? So it's again, it's that it's that quick information that, that people need access to. So, so Greg, can I trouble you to just do that measurement one more time? Yep, absolutely. I, I want to know how, how big my office is going to be in yep. that building. So you, you can pop in here and it really is point and click, right? You're just dropping the uh, cursor on top of the corners of the office here. And then you get the ability to get the measurement there. And then for our folks where maybe they need to, uh, we're dealing uh, with international crowd, you can toggle back and forth. We've set it to default at, uh, at square feet or decimal feet, right? You get the ability 
to get everything you need right in there. So again, quick tools, folks normally see that and say, hey, this is, this is great. I've got access to visual data that I could, I didn't even know what to do with before. Awesome. Uh, so, uh, so, so Greg, how, how hard or easy is it to add digital assets to pocket buildings? Uh, we hope, and I, I've heard it twice today with people that we've done demos for today, how easy it is to add um, digital assets. And um, I can, I'll show you here. And then um, Dan, what I might do is actually someone in your network reached out to me this morning and I created a building for them in a, about two and a half minutes. So I'll jump over to our other account and show you that here in a second. Okay. Um, two things that we allow for. Um, you'll see uploaders in just about every content area. So your upload system is here. You can drag and drop, hit the mark. It will instantaneously be brought into pocket buildings. The first thing that we do is automatically sort it by the file type. So if it's a JPEG, it is going to move into the photo section over here automatically. We're gonna generate the thumbnail view. And if you open up this info slider over here on the right, you can see that we've dropped it in our photo section. I've got the ability to add notes and then tag it. We can't tell you how important every user if you're tired of wasting time searching for things down the road, tag it with the way that it makes sense. What's important to note, we decoupled the file type from where, where you would like it to live. So for ultimate curation and a perfect example here is that we had folks going in, taking photos of floor plans. They would upload it to pocket buildings. It was a JPEG, right? We're automatically gonna sort that as a photo. They came back and said, wait a minute, it's not a photo, it's a floor plan. Or maybe I want it to live in both sections. That is completely okay with us. You can do that, right? Very easy point and click. The other thing, sometimes you want the same piece of content to live in tens or hundreds of content bundles. You can decide do I, what content bundle do I want that piece of information to live in. You don't need to create a copy. You don't need to have version one, version two, version three. You can simply check the box on the content bundle that you want something to live in there. So again, we try to make it super easy to bring it in and take that first crack at it right down the road. We've got some really cool plans with machine learning to train it, right? To say, hey, that PDF that just came in, it's a lease abstract, it's not a floor plan, put it in the document section or vice versa, right? It comes in, algorithm looks at it and says, hey, there's a lot of lines on this. 90% of this drawing is architectural lines. That's a floor plan. Put it over in the floor plan section. So drag and drop from any area, right? Super easy there. The other ability that you have is upload, right? So from your desktop, you've got the ability to just click the upload button, select and dump it in. Same thing. It will stop, start auto categorizing. Um, any URL that you have, so YouTube, Vimeo, uh, the RICO link, the Matterport link, drop it in there. We'll automatically categorize that as well. What I'm really excited because we're super close on right now. Um, our mobile app is almost done. We're in final testing of it right now because one of the things that we were hearing, some of the most frustrating times where folks were like, look, I'm out in the field, I'm taking a photo, I'm taking a quick video on my iPhone, right? I've got this data. Now I've got to sit down at my desk, download it to my laptop, upload it to pocket buildings, right? The intention was always to have a mobile app we wanted to get the web app working first and in a good place. We've now uh, turned our eye. We're just about done. So we are, fingers crossed, submitting to the iOS store at the end of this month. And we'll have a fully published version of the mobile app that is native. So, uh, so by April 2021, we should see the, uh, the companion app for pocket buildings. Yep. And I'll, uh, I'll give you a is little. It, is it mostly for viewing content or it, it... uploading content or actually both? It is actually for both. So we, we were very particular in the way that we wanted it to be a native app um, so that you could pick. So when it, the app opens up, you can pick from your photo stream, right? From your videos, you can create a content bundle on there. You could upload from the field that information, right? And then you will have the ability to then share that content bundle from the site as well. Again, given that we do focus on some development stuff, it was important for folks to be able to get that real information from the field back to the office as quickly as possible. And is this iOS only, iOS and Android? We are submitting to iOS first, and then it will be going into uh, Android the, the following week after that. So we will support both, but iOS is the priority right now. Safe to say, sort of, kind of, 
you get your the Apple store approval Correct. by end of April, 2021, uh, both uh, iOS, Android, uh, pocket buildings app, uh, both for viewing content and sharing content. Absolutely. So again, drag and drop, you know, click to upload, trying to make it as easy as possible to get information into the system. And then I'll say, stay tuned for some integration announcements um, that we'll have later on this year as well. Okay, cool. Even so you're showing me about uploading content. I'm, I'm uh, just obsessed with understanding this back end of, of how, how easy or hard it is to upload content to Pocket Building. How about this? I'm going to switch over and show you a building I did this morning, and then I'll just uh, I'll drop a little bit of uh, information in. So I'm going to sign out of uh, of my main account here, and okay. I. Okay. Well, this is something that's not confidential. You're about to show us. I hope not. I, I I haven't spoken to him, but it was it's photos that are out on the internet. And everything's there, so I don't think okay. there'll be any issues with it. Um, so we'll go ahead, and uh, we have an account that we maintain. Um, for um, for service um, as well. But we created a building this morning, right? With nothing more than an address and some basic information. Um, we were able uh, to set it up very quickly. So I went in, all you need is an address, year built and square footage. You can make up square footage, you can make up year built, you can go back and edit at any time, takes about 90 seconds to do so. Um, I then created uh, four bundles in a couple of seconds here. So general building info, virtual tours, floor plans, right? So I was able to go in and drop some information in off screen here. I am just gonna go in and grab a little bit of data. So hey, bear with me for one second. Running two desktops at the moment. So we'll go ahead and drop in some additional information here. And these happen to be PNG files. So we are automatically I'm going to sort them. So right now you're seeing that we're creating our thumbnail generator is operating and working. So we're creating that preview of the image. These have been classified um, as photos. So we've now dropped them into the photo section. So they now live on there. Again, very easy to uh, do that. We've got the ability now open up the photo, go ahead and say, hey, it's already said, hey, it's living in photos and general building info. I've got the ability to then I'll put this in and say, hey, I want this to be part of the photos bundle as well. And I'll give you a perfect example because it happened this morning. Um, we got PNG floor plans. So these actually came in and were auto categorized to start as photos. I simply switched them over to the floor plan section here, put them in the floor plan bundle and then saved it. And then voila, they came over to our floor plan section. Um, we uploaded the Matterport link, so it was quick and easy to import that. There were some uh, details available on the building, so I grabbed that. Again, it took me about five minutes total to do this and to upload the data. I invited Jonathan to the building immediately following. He said, hey, I've got some high-res images here. What do you think? I said, drop into the content bundle section, go to the photos when you're home later tonight, drop those photos in there. We'll process them, we'll put them up, and then we'll come back and curate it. And then we're going to do is walk the folks through tomorrow on the public page setting. So this is what it looks like in the off. They want to display this building to the world and everything that's on there. So they simply go to this public mode, right? You're always going to get that alert. Hey, you are choosing to publish this on a public URL, right? We want that double verification. And then the ability for you to just very quickly go in and say, here we go. And then we could just say, hey, we just want it to be uh, 162 Van Dyke Street. Save all that information. And now we've got our public page ready to go. We've got our URL. We've got our content bundles um, sorted. We've uploaded our information here and we're ready to go. And now we can start inviting folks uh, to the building to upload their content as well. And I think that's something that's, that's overlooked um, quite a bit is folks look at it and they're like, wow, we could use this for thousands of pieces of visual information, or we can use it for maybe just our 50 best pieces of information, right? The beautiful photos, um, the marketing videos that are done, the virtual tours, and they see it sometimes as maybe, hey, it's burdensome for me to curate this myself. Well, in this case, right, when Jonathan gets back to the office this evening, the invite's already waiting for him for the building. When he logs in, he's gonna have full access. 
he can simply go and upload the data. And then when I check in in the morning, I'll see all the photos and everything's there. So folks that are invited automatically sort of become collaborate. You can choose to make them a collaborator and allow them to upload information back to you. Okay, so if I've uploaded 50 photos, mm -hmm. can I either select all or select a subset to be shared? Oh, absolutely. Yep, so easy so way. I can share in a content bundle, uh, in a, in a um, curated bundle, all the pictures go to A, B, and C. Half of these pictures go to D, E, and F, and three pictures go to H, L, M, L, M, N, O, P. Yep. So in this example, let's say we wanted to do, uh, just create a bundle for second floor photos, right? Hey, we wanna organize this based on floor. So I'm gonna go and create our second floor photos over here. I'm gonna jump over to my file manager section, go to photos and videos, right? And say, hey, these four, these three photos, not all of them are second floor. I wanna go over here to my bundle side, drop it in my second floor bundle, hit save. And then if you jump back over to the uh, bundle section, second floor photos is now here. So we've now moved them into this location. And now I have the ability to say, hey, you know what? I wanna go share that uh, with the broker because he asked me earlier about it. Pa so you... Pause there, please, pause there. Let's talk about permissions while you're there. Yep. Permissions, big thing about what we do. You, you had the screen up, but if you go to share. Yep. So if you maybe, uh, here's our full, here's our full permission list as it stands right now. Um, we are going to simplify this a little bit based on some user feedback. Um, we're going to change it based on what it allows you to do, right? Can you view the content? Can you download the content? Can you invite users? So right now the state that we're in, um, it is from least amount of access to highest. So admin, right, has the ability to do just about anything. Um, they can add, they can delete, they can invite people. Editors, uh, step down below, can add, can curate, but cannot delete anything. Um, contributors, they cannot create any bundles, they cannot create any posts, but they can upload information back to you. So we see that a lot for service providers, um, get, uh, get the ability to do that. Members have the ability to invite outside users. Most commonly, that's like a sales role. I want to invite this person to the building, but my administrative team doesn't want me to touch it. And then viewer and subscriber. For us, we started, we didn't have subscriber. We just had viewer. And folks said, okay, so I invite somebody to view it. Can they download the files? And we said, yeah, absolutely. They're like, well, we don't want them to be able to download it. And we said, okay, we can create that ability, but we go, here's what we can't stop. Someone can take a screenshot on their computer of that file. We can't stop that from happening. And they said, all we want to know is that they cannot download a full copy of that PDF. We said, fine. So we broke it into a uh, viewer, which all you can do is look at it. Subscriber allows you to be able to look at it and download as well. So we've got a couple different permissions there. We are, um, we, 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 we do recognize the fact we really wanted to try and keep it to four. It just was not feasible based on everything that we were trying to do. So we look forward based on some, uh, some user feedback on moving this more to a, hey, what can I do with this role? Don't tell me a name, tell me what I can actually do. Yeah, yeah, yep. that's awesome. So, so, so uh, Greg, we, before we move into kind of the phase two of today's show, how Matterport service providers can make money with pocket buildings, is there anything else that you either wanted to show on the front end or on the back end? I, th I think that was just about everything. And Dan, I appreciate you. Sometimes we get asked to do like our turbo version of the tour, right? Where folks ask us to blast through everything. So I think that was a really really good, um, you know, we dove, we dove into every section, um, great questions there. So I think I'm good with everything that we've shown thus far, unless you have any other questions. Um, so if, let's see, I'm gonna just stop sharing on that because uh, okay. I, I didn't have any other questions on the either the front end or the back end, but I, I just wanna make sure before we move into how Matterport service providers can make money with pocket buildings that we, we've covered either the, 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 the big picture or, or anything else that you wanted to, 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 to 
talk about in terms of pocket buildings. I, no, and, and again, I appreciate the opportunity to, uh, to be here today. I, I would just stress, right, that we see so much opportunity in commercial real estate uh, with the app right now. And it's funny, folks, folks stop us and say, hey, I want to use it to do this. I want to use, I want to, I want to use it to deliver re, uh, return to the office videos so that I know my property management team has viewed all our policies and procedures. They've got a checklist that they can view, right? We're delivering all this visual content to them. Then we talk to like a, a, a sales and a marketing team that's like, look, we want to use it to promote this visual data to the world, right? We want to get this in front of as many people as we possibly can. Then we've got the, you know, asset portfolio teams that are like, look, I'm responsible for, you know, tenant improvement projects that are going on. I've got to, uh, you know, get the marketing brochure over to the broker when it's time to lease the space. So they're using it sort of all over the place from like beginning to end. So the big thing for us is, and I'll, I'll try to stress this, right? We fall into three categories, using it for development of the property from ground up or renovation, management of the property, right? Uh, dealing with uh, tenant um, engagement and then transaction time, right? From lease to disposition to acquisition, that's really where we see kind of our core foundation and us kind of bridging the gap between development and transaction. So that's the main point that I wanted to get across. Uh, awesome. While you were talking, uh, you, were, you were talking a little bit about, did, did I open, not open? That sounded like analytics. Could you take us back into analytics? And, yep. and so, a- a- Analytics is, is something um, that it's, it's very simple um, in concept, right? Um, it's very difficult because we've got so many people using the platform in so many different ways. Some wanna use analytics more as a security audit, right? Who's downloading information, who's inviting users, right? Then we have folks on the uh, sales and marketing side, like, look, I wanna know what content is being viewed for how long, what's my favorite piece? What are people clicking on? What are they checking out? Um, then we have folks saying, hey, I wanna make sure that the architect actually met the requirement of uploading the data that we want. So analytics is something that it is a massive undertaking. It's on our list of development um, this year. Um, The good news is in the background, we are tracking just about every piece of data that we think is going to be valuable for the future. And it's not, we get this question a lot, right? It's not because we wanna sell data or do anything with it. Brian and I stand firm that we, it is your data, you control us access to it, we don't own it. Um, we're not looking to sell anything data related on the platform. Um, but what we do wanna do is make sure when we do release analytics that we've got historical data. So about eight months ago, we started tracking everything that was going on conceivable so that when we turn analytics on and that project is done, we'll have historical data to present to people. So again, not there yet, um, but is certainly coming. Okay, no show and tell on analytics today. I, I wish I did. We're, I would say we're in the design phase right now. Okay, sounds very exciting because it sounds like you can answer, you will be able, Pocket Buildings will be able to answer a lot of questions that are likely asked in different ways by different constituencies, depending on how the, the content is consumed. Absolutely. And the point we're at right now, like the more feedback we can get on what's important from people, um, that is the best for us so that we can hone in on the analytics that everybody wants to see. Okay. I think it might be helpful if we understood uh, pocket buildings pricing yeah. uh, before our, our next topic. Do you, do you want to go into share screen and, and bring that up and talk us through that? Yep. Absolutely. Give me one second here to pull up the website. Um, I know there was some uh, engagement on the forum last night. Some folks were asking questions about our pricing and what we're doing. Um, I will answer it in the same way that we're there. We are very transparent um, on our pricing. So let me just go ahead and pull that up for you now. Can everybody see that? I apologize, our little web bot is popping up there for everyone to see. so, so, so th- because the print is small, those that, that want to follow along at home, their home office, I guess, is pocketbuildings.com forward slash pricing, or just go to pocketbuildings.com and select the tab pricing. There's no mystery yeah. around this. Yep, yeah, no, no mystery on this, right? We, we're not looking to hide it. We've published it since the very beginning. Um, we, we are very easy in the way that we do it. We are a SaaS platform, right? Um, it is a per building per month fee. The charge and what level you fall into depends on the amount of storage that you need per building, the level of service that you want, and then the type of content that you want um, to access. Important to note, um, 
your first building is always free. You can get on, you can use the platform. Um, we allow you, uh, it's a gig worth of total storage. And we have allowed you to upload 10 CADs and a single Revit on the free building so that we can get user, user feedback. So Dan, you look like you have a question. I'll pause for a second. Well, I, I think I'm missing the top where I, whether I'm on a paying month to month or paying annually. So the yep. pricing that we're looking at is selected for. Yep, so this is annual. So th this monthly rate is based on a 12 month contract with us. So if the professional plan is $35 a month or $420 per year, okay. if you opt, Sorry, if you opt to go monthly, that's going to go up to uh, to 50 a month um, on that plan. So we are looking at the and all these prices include uh, this uh, assumes a 12 month annual contract. OK, so I'm a little bit confused on the free plan because it sounds like there's more value there than it's actually disclosed. There is. It's only because we're in the middle of uh, before we released uh, mobile and some other features that we're doing. And we're actually in the midst of overhauling the website right now. So by Friday. Uh, we've got a couple new areas that are going to be, um, uh, we're changing out the banner up top. We've changed some of the messaging. We're incorporating um, some additional pages into the website. So this is how it stands right now. By Friday, it's going to look a, look a little bit different. Okay. So uh, going forward in the free basic, in the basic plan that is free, mm -hmm. uh, does that include the ability to upload a SketchUp or Revit file? We'll let you do one Revit and, and uh, 10 CADs. And 10? CAD drawings. Okay. And does it include adding a Matterport link? We can support, yeah, you can always support Matterport, YouTube, and Vimeo, um, and, uh, and video files as well. In the free plan? In the free plan, yes. And does that support Rico Tours as well? Any virtual tour provider that we support, um, you can use on the free plan. And I, I do see that uh, shaded out is the 360 photo viewer. So is that yep. available in the free plan? It is, yeah. So again, we're overhauling all of this uh, today. Really what it is on the free plan for us, it's that gig storage limit that is going to be the limiting factor because we okay. just can't have people uploading, you know, 15 gig videos and then sharing them across. So, yeah, you know, I think what I'm really looking for there, you know, you know I, uh, you know, as I, I, I think for Matterport service providers, even before we go out and talk to a potential client, we kind of want to be able to play with the system, upload uh, oh, yeah. content for one building, and now actually be able to sit down with the client to show them perhaps content that we've uploaded in our account and feel totally comfortable with the back end while we're talking to a, a prospective client. I totally agree. And, and to take it even a step further, uh, myself or someone on my team would be happy to walk anybody through creating that first building, um, giving you a quick tour. I realize that there are folks that want to do it on their own and discover them. I'm totally supportive of that. Um, but we are happy to walk people through. We actually encourage that they test out their first building first to ensure that they are comfortable with it and they know how it operates. Yeah, it seemed totally simple to me. To me, And the good news is our, our community or our old uh, first quintile techie, geeky. Yep. Uh, so I, I, I think we have an audience that should just be, if, if they can't self-activate on this platform, I, I would be super surprised. Yeah, and, and then the, the other thing we're doing is um, we are working, we just activated, uh, we're going to be firing up a step-by-step -step tour guide inside the app. So in the next two weeks, when you log in, it'll give you sort of that step-by-step -step, uh, yeah. progression and how to do things. So again, we've got a ton of development work going on, obviously, um, at the moment, and quite a few uh, exciting announcements in the, in the next uh, month or so. Okay, so the only thing I think I'm missing in the basic package is the ability to view a CAD file. So is that changing as well? So that yeah. I will. So yep. really, the limiting factor will, will be the total storage. It's it's going to be storage, and it's going to be the number of CADs and the number of Revit's because we incur a cost on those. Uh, for, quite frankly, to convert those over. Yeah, you know, I, I I just in my mind that free it, it, for our community at least. I, is just having our own account that we're totally comfortable with lo uploading every piece of content and then the ability of how that gets shared. So we, we would absolutely love to have anybody that wants to try a free building, go to the, uh, go to the get started, sign up for an account. If you're running into trouble, Greg at Pocket Buildings, I'll get you in touch with the team member, 
team member will make sure that we get you in, we get you activated and that you're totally comfortable, give you a quick walkthrough and a tour if you need it, or if you want to discover on your own and answer uh, and ask some questions afterwards, again, you can, you can get in touch with me through the forum and I'm happy to, uh, to take those. Okay, so a couple things. So I reach out directly to Greg, G-R-E-G at Pocket Buildings with an S, pocketbuildings.com or in the We Get Around Network Forum, wganforum.com. If you put in the search box, pocket buildings, you'll find all the content in the We Get Around Network Forum regarding pocket buildings and any discussions the community's having. I'm still missing on that basic plan to understand, can I sh share a content bundle? Every plan supports unlimited sharing. You could share that bundle. Okay, so I shouldn't be distracted by, I don't, I, I, I see it shaded. I should just think about everything that I should be able to do with. Uh, we want, we want a full, we want a full featured experience for the free account that supports CAD and Revit and all of our other features uh, supporting unlimited users, right? The only thing that we take into account, these are the only two, the three caps you're going to run into. Storage is set at one gig, CAD is set at 10, and Revit is set at one. Other than that, you can upload anything up to the gig limit and share with unlimited users. That's beautiful. I just think that that, that, just, that just unlocks the ability for a Matterport service provider to create a sample building and actually go out and talk to a potential client. So that- And the, I'll, I'll even take it a step further. So folks that want to create their own building for, uh, for free for themselves to try, absolutely no problem there. If they need a building for a client because they would like to showcase it, um, we would let that client register for a free building. I'm happy to extend that to the service provider network and would gladly fire up another free building for them, let them control it and invite, the, uh, invite their client to it as well. So we're super flexible on that. Um, ideally, right, we want folks using the platform and collaborating on it and sharing. Okay, should we look at the other pricing tiers? I'll, I'll make it super easy for you. So it's a cost of, bill, uh, it's per building per month, what you see on our website. Um, everyone has opted for annual plans thus far. Um, and then uh, we do offer discount based on uh, portfolio and length of, uh, length of term. So annual contract, the prices that you see up there, 35, 85, or 195 per month. 35 gets you up to CAD, 85 gets you better support and into a 3D Revit world with very generous storage limit. And then we actually had some early clients coming saying, hey, can you curate our building? Can you handle it? Can you set it up? Can you upload the content? So our enterprise plus package includes uh, free, uh, we're not free, <laughs> we're setting up their building, performing onboarding training, um, and then running a, a monthly uh, check-in call with them. And then they've got dedicated 24 by seven support. So a couple different levels. Uh, whatever's right, you know, self-service um, is fine with us. Or if you'd like a little bit more of a hands-on um, approach, we're happy to provide that uh, as well. Awesome. How can Matterport service providers make money with pocket buildings? Do you want to take this, Dan, or you want to start, or you want me? You want me to go first? I, I, uh, why don't you go ahead and, and okay. talk about, and then I had some thoughts as well. Yeah, so it, it's interesting, um, and kind of the genesis of, of you and I meeting um, was we have, we've started to get asked by clients, hey, you know, we open up a Matterport tour, and it kind of blew me away that some of them, like, had never seen a Matterport tour before, and would actually go back and ask us, like, that Matterport thing, is that like pocket buildings? I'm like, no, it's not, it's a, you know, it's a technology we support, and then we had folks come back and say, hey, wait a minute, we're buying a new building in Virginia. We need, we want Matterport tours for every suite. We want a marketing video done. We want drone. We want professional photography. We want floor plans. Who can you recommend? And we're like, we're not a content creator, right? Like we're, we're a content hoster, but we're not a content creator. So the, the genesis of the conversation and Taylor connecting the two of us was like, hey, I think you need to, you need to speak with Dan. He's, he's part of this network of all these folks that are out around the US doing it. So, you know, we're interested uh, in, you know, connecting with folks around the country that provide these services, know exactly what they do so that we get asked, right? There's a part of it where you thought about, um, you know, incorporating um, a button in the app, like need content created, right? Where it would submit a form and then we could connect those, uh, connect the content needers with the content creators, right? And then we can act as that intermediate um, in the gateway. And then someone asked me a question in the forum last night. I can't remember their name right now. I apologize. 
and said, hey, right, are you selling direct to the user? Is it a referral fee? Uh, is it, are we handling you know, MSPs in a different way? And the answer to all those questions is yes. And I'll kind of explain them uh, one by one here. We are always going to list our pricing on our website. We have been transparent from the beginning about it with people. It is up there. Um, we are happy to operate in a hybrid model where we have folks, and I think Dan and I, you had spoken about it, that would say, hey, we want to manage this. We had someone from the network reach out on Monday, uh, Tuesday morning, hey, would you allow me to manage this for my buildings and actually resell it to them? The answer to that is yes, and we will work with you on discounted pricing to ensure that you can make money on pocket buildings, and we would still maintain these costs so that if someone were to go and look, they would see it, but there's no, uh, no concern there. And then we will and have at times folks that said, look, I'm going to make a referral of this case. The client is just more comfortable doing a direct relationship with pocket buildings. In that case, we would look at a uh, referral uh, uh, agreement. And I know Dan, you and I have had some preliminary conversations about how that would work, but we're happy to support it um, in any way. So if you'd like to host and make money and be the person that is reselling it, we're good with that. If you'd like to provide a referral and get paid on it, we're okay in that scenario as well. But I will make the point that yes, we are out there selling to users right now. They can sign up on the, uh, on the website and we will always publish our pricing. Awesome. A anything else on that topic? I think that's it. That's uh, I, pretty cut and dry, I think. Okay. I, and I have, I have thoughts. So uh, all those things that so far have been asked by uh, members of the We Get Around Network forum are asking about pocketbuildings.com, about the subscription plans and you know, can I get a referral fee? Can I get a discount and resell? And, and when I think of that, I think about that, that's this much of the potential for Matterport service providers. And so what I mean by that, Greg, is, I mean, you, you, you teed it up perfectly. You went out talking about pocket buildings to a prospective commercial space. They looked at Matterport and they went, oh my gosh, we want to have that for all our buildings. Mm -hmm. So the way I would suggest the Matterport service provider look at themselves is not that you're a Matterport service provider or a photographer and you create digital content. Of course you do that. But if you take on a little bit of a consulting cell role that you now elevate to having a solution rather than individual digital assets. Yes, of course you shoot photos and video and Matterport and drones and floor plans and uh, maybe, maybe some other digital assets that uh, are appropriate or links to other things. But if you think of yourself as, I have a solution that will enable you, you and you could be one of many things. You can be the individual building. You could be the facilities manager. You could be the owner of the building. You could be the marketing department for the building. You can be the property management company. Whomever a Matterport service provider is talking to is you now have a solution of how they can store all their digital assets across all their different departments and then be able to curate that content in order to be able to share it to the various constituencies that need to be able to get that content. So that whole idea of being able to store all the digital assets in one place and be able to curate that content in an easy way to share it, I believe that that opens up questions like, well, uh, that's great. We need all those digital assets. We don't have all those. Uh, that's okay. I can provide that. Oh, we have buildings across town. Oh, yes, I can provide that digital, those digital assets. Oh, we have buildings across the country. Uh, yes, we can help you with that. We have buildings across the globe. Yes, we can help them with that. So we, as, as the We Get Around Network community of 25,000 plus Matterport service providers and related 3D and 360 tour providers, it's super easy for us to connect you, a Matterport service provider, with other trusted colleagues. So 
to me, this is all, almost like a gold rush that's about to take place. And because you're watching the show, you have that knowledge that the visceral reaction of your potential client in the commercial space will, will be, I need digital content. I need a lot of digital content. And as soon as you build a trusted relationship providing those digital assets, the next logical thing that they're gonna say is, we need help with other buildings outside of the greater Boston area. We need it across the country, or around the globe. And the answer is not, oh, I only serve as Boston. The answer is, yes, I can help you with that. So I, I would ask Matterport service providers to reach out to me in the We Get Around Network forum if you are presented with the problem, which I think is a huge opportunity, that the client says they need help with all digital assets, photo, video, Matterport, floor plans, and, and then all the related uh, uh, assets that may not be uh, is, is quite as comfortable for Matterport service provider to quite understand SketchUp and Revit and CAD files. But I'll talk about that in a moment. But I think that's such an opportunity to have a trusted relationship with a commercial account that you're in the position to recommend refer either other photographers or better yet, just offer it through you, your company. Uh, and um, our community can certainly help you uh, find uh, other photographers across the country, around the globe. So I think the really the bigger opportunity here, Greg, is not necessarily for Matterport service providers to be reselling um, pocket buildings accounts or looking for an affiliate commission or looking for a discount to offer it or a white label or whatever it might be. It's, it's really to be a solutions provider to, to elevate that you're, you know, oh, you know, it's not Dan Smigrod, the photographer that's just shown up. It's Dan Smigrod who brings us ideas about how we can aggregate all our digital assets in all the departments. I, I think, Greg, when you started out talking about pocket buildings, the you were talking about you know the the problem and uh, you know. And, and I've experienced that when, you know, ever I've asked a large company for digital assets and it's like, okay, well, photos are kept by Sue and CAD files. Well, that's actually kept by our architect. Yep. And uh, you're asking about this as built. I think we did something like that. Uh, I don't necessarily know what that is, but I can ask Jane about the as-built that was done prior to the renovation of the building. And, oh, we need the logo. Oh, well, that's kept by marketing. And now I need, um, uh, I, I need uh, floor plans and that's yet somebody else. And, and, and I think uh, for Matterport service provider to understand that large companies are so inefficient with how they do things. So when there's a problem about curating content, they just figure, well, we'll just hire more people to, to, to manage all the content that has to be shared everywhere, right? That's what happens. You hire more people and all of a sudden you got a, you know, a digital department and all they do is like curate content to all the right people asking. So all these questions would be, and it's, and it's not just, it's not just these different departments, marketing, sales, operations, design, architects, I mean, whatever the different divisions in a big company, <clears throat> then it's the different programs they're in. Mm -hmm. yeah, I, you just, the, the example you just laid out is, is seriously almost every single commercial real estate company or any enterprise organization in the world um, that has a, a large amount of real estate, right? Is it's a very, real problem. The data is scattered all over the place. It's not centralized. It's not organized. It's not in perhaps most times a format that some people can even open. I, I, I can literally tell you, I, I've spoken to maybe a handful that have a good handle on it um, and have a bit, and even they are stringing together a couple different systems to be able to do it. And they've turned around and said, boy, I wish we knew about you two, three years ago before we undertook that project to go through it. 
And then the other side of this, I'm floored at the amount of people that still are living in paper plans in, in commercial real estate. I mean, there is, right? I, I, someone told me a stat the other day, like 2% of the commercial real estate in the world like is digitized. And by digitized, I mean, maybe has a photo of it somewhere. Yeah. I mean, there's a massive opportunity for service providers and content creators out there. And, and the, it, the, the time is coming. It's now. There is a true focus on that. Yeah, it's a massive opportunity. And, you know, and I, I started to, you know, share about it it's in different formats. So I think about, oh, well, we keep that content in SharePoint. Mm -hmm. uh, we keep it in Salesforce. Uh, we keep it in Dropbox. We keep it in Google Drive. We keep it, well, and then, well, where do you keep your links to everything? Well, that's in a different document. So it's not just across departments, it's all scattered in, in different platforms. And so that's why, you know, the first, the, the first time that you and I talked and I went, oh my gosh, this is so amazing. Pocket Buildings solves a real problem for commercial spaces. So Dan, I apologize, I flipped my notebook, which I didn't mean to do, but I was on a demo this morning. And let me give you a real life example. When they looked at pocket buildings and said, can I just tell you all the databases where this information, all the programs where this information lives right now? eBuilder, Argus, Yardi, Salesforce.com, VTS, and three internal databases in, inside our company is where they're currently housing all the information that we showed them today, which could have been done on one platform, which is- Yeah, which is and, and I, I'm guessing that's just, the platforms that they were aware of. Yeah. Because <laughs> you haven't said, well, do you have any, you know, Word documents? Oh yeah. Do you have any Excel documents? Oh, oh, oh yeah. You have any PowerPoints? Well, yep. yes. Uh, okay. Does anyone in your organization use Google Drive? Mm -hmm. Well, they're not does, supposed to, but they do. Yeah. Does, does your architect have the Revit models from the pro, from the build three years ago? Yep, they do. Okay. So, so it, it, it truly is a, a really, really big problem. I think that's what's got us so excited about it is because the, the market opportunity is so huge. There's a desire and a need um, to start centralized and organizing this. People are tired of wasting time. And look, given COVID, there's just less people to do the tasks that need to be done, right? It was the unfortunate reality of what went down last year. And now folks, we've had some say, I can legitimately quantify that you're going to save me three hours per week searching through Box, Dropbox, and Salesforce.com. And for that alone, it's worth it because anytime someone asks me a question, oh, that's visual content, it's in pocket buildings. And I know the address of the building it's under. So, yeah. I can so th this, this is where I, I, I this, this is where I'm kind of appealing to Matterport service providers is, is to say, stop thinking about yourself as a photographer or a content creator. That's great. We know you are. We know that's what you do. But hearing the problem that Greg's, the problems that Greg is talking about today for a commercial space, there should be this giant aha moment. So you don't need to go in to talk about I sell photos and Matterport tours and video and aerial and floor plans and, and renderings and virtual staging. No, you have a solution for aggregating all the digital assets in a company and then enabling the easy curation of that content to be shared as appropriate with the permissions of whom is allowed to do what with what information of whether they can view it, <clears throat> excuse me, whether they can view it or download it or add content, <clears throat> excuse me. It, I just, it's like, this is like so amazing. And that's why I think because Pocket Buildings is relatively new, you've had enough traction to be around for a while, but still mm -hmm. relatively new. So there's so many people in the commercial space that haven't heard of Pocket Buildings yet. And that's why if a Matterport service provider is the first one in and, and you have different ways to enter a building. So if, if you think about uh, all the different constituencies who, who might want to take owner, this is like when the web first started, like which department is going to be responsible for the web for a company? I mean, it really, is it IT? Is it marketing? Is it sales? Is it operations? Is it the IT? You know, so you, there's still an opportunity for who might take ownership of bringing pocket buildings into the organization. And mm -hmm. so you may already have trusted colleagues 
that are in leasing of commercial spaces or they're in sales of commercial spaces or in their marketing of commercial spaces or they're in advertising or social media or maybe they're an architect or maybe they're a general contractor or maybe they're construction manager, maybe they're a facilities manager, um, maybe they own the building, maybe they are property management company. So it, you have different ways that you can enter the commercial space. And at some point, that organization is going to have this like, ah, ah, we can put all our digital assets in one place and easily share them. And, and I think, Greg, to, you know, one of the points that you made is you, you, you already had large companies come to you and, and say, well, can you curate this for us? Mm -hmm. So you're, you're scratching your head thinking about, well, maybe we need to be in the service business. Well, you know. I don't want to be in the service business. <laughs> That's the reality. Yep. Thank you. So Matterport service providers, you're kind of in the right place at the right time that if you're having a relationship with the client, they might actually say, could you manage this whole process for us? Now, I, I don't know how you're going to charge for that, but that's a problem that you can solve and money will make it go away. And a large company will pay a lot of money on a monthly basis for you just to manage their digital assets. So that's still an opportunity that you, that you may be asked to handle. Yeah. So could you set it up for us? Mm -hmm. Could you manage it on an ongoing basis? Could you curate it? So I just, I just look at this and go, the, the possibilities are, are, are absolutely endless. I, I, it's one of the most fun experiences I've had in my life, honestly, when we show it to all the different groups inside, like, like you said, and they all, they all latch on to their little piece of how they want to use it and what they want to do with pocket buildings. But I mean, it is not uncommon. We've done demos for big companies with nine different departments on from property to development to legal to finance. To, I, I mean, it's astounding. And they all get on and they're like, you know, their head spinning and they're like, wow, the development team came and said like they were going to use this just to open a cat and could we join this call and get on? And they're like, we didn't know it could do all of these other things and truly help, help us, right? In a small way, helping the digital transformation for, for a lot of these companies and to get there, right? So we're, we're happy to be a part of it. It really truly is an exciting time. It's awesome. Um, uh, before we wrap up, I, I, there, there is one other thing I wanted to talk about is because sometimes still it's hard to get your hands around understanding pocket buildings, even though you've talked about it at a big picture level, you've given a deep dive demo of the front end, you've showed us the back end. But for my community, sometimes metaphors help. And I think a lot of us are familiar with single property websites. And that's how we share, prop, how we share content with real estate agents, for example. So on that single property website, we include Matterport and photos and video or aerial or, or renderings or virtual staging. Um, or any other digital or descriptions or maps or, or lead generation page, all the things that we have uh, as a Matterport service provider with one of many different single property website solutions for sharing that content. And so I, I would almost describe pocket buildings as a single property website on steroids. And so what I mean by that is now you can share different versions of the content, just like you would share uh, a, a, uh, a branded version, an unbranded version of a single property website, you have a way to share different versions of the content. You have a way to share additional content that's not generally available on a single property website, in particular, the CAD files, uh, you know, like SketchUp and Revit and uh, um, uh, uh, so these and, and the ability for the viewer to be able to look at actually and measure in CAD uh, in Revit and Revit and SketchUp. Uh, and you have a, yet additional layers of sharing and permissions and the kind of content. So if you kind of think about it as a single property website on steroids with how content gets shared, uh, how it gets stored, viewed and shared, uh, uh, pocket buildings is an amazing solution. Greg, we haven't even talked about like, well, okay, there have been other use cases that people looked at your platform and said, wow, this is amazing. We could do. Uh, we, do we do 
we do get that. That's almost the number one thing. Everybody looks at it. And, and they, again, I go back to it. They just say, oh, I would use it for video delivery for this. I would use it for as built um, ingestion at a time when the product is done and I've got my as built. I would use it for floor plan turnover when brokers need to that, that information. I would use it for, for marketing purposes. And that's what's kind of blown us away is the amount of use cases that folks have come, uh, come back to us and seen. I can say the one area I never thought that we would dip into would be residential. I just didn't see it coming. I, and, and not that it is a focus, we are squarely focused on commercial real estate, but I was astounded in the super early days, we had a friend who was undergoing a renovation on a you know regular size home in Virginia and came to us and said, um, going through this renovation, architect hired a scanning company. I've got point cloud, a final Revit model. of. I've got a Revit model of my house. I've got 2D CADs and they did some tour thing with photos that I can click around in his house that was not that big. And we were Florida. They said, oh, at the end of the project, they're coming back again to, to do all of that data. And he came to us and said, the scanning company came to me and said, hey, we need you to look at that Revit model and, and, and approve it so we can get paid. And he's tried to open it and was like, what do I do? So he called us. He said, can I put my house on like my regular house on pocket buildings? We're like, absolutely throw it up on there. See it. And we were kind of floored. And when you see that type of technology coming down um, into residential and now the things that the iPhone is doing with the LIDAR scanner on it, I mean, look, let's face it. There is going to be a surge of new visual content, particularly I think for space planning that's going to be coming out in the next couple of years. And like, that's what gets us super excited about being here and then the opportunity to service more and more markets. Yes, I, I would say innovation often occurs at the intersection of a, a technology design for one use case, and it's actually ends up being used for a different use case. So uh, I, again, I would say to Matterport service providers, we're, we're here today talking about commercial real estate and mm -hmm. every iteration that we possibly can think in every constituency, uh, but you know, you may have an expertise in a particular vertical where mm -hmm. pocket buildings applies and don't feel that you need to be constrained by it's not a commercial space. It's, it's something else. Mm -hmm. uh, uh, and you may identify a problem that a client has that pocket building solves, or you may be in a vertical that pocket building solves. So, uh, um, anyway, I, Greg, I've been super excited visiting with you today. Is there anything else that we should cover you haven't talked about? I don't think so. I think that's it. I, I normally get excited. I want to talk about future stuff, but I'm not, I promised myself I wouldn't do it on this call. I've mentioned a couple of things that are coming, but uh, really for us, uh, mobile app, and then, and then please just give us a try. Any questions, hit me in the forum, um, please. I, I, we, again, we love answering questions. We love being challenged. It's the point we're at. We get it. We're a young company. We're growing pretty fast. We're happy to take feedback uh, from folks and the tough feedback too. So please get in touch with us and, and let us know what you think. Awesome. You can uh, go to Pocket Buildings website, Pocket Buildings with an S, pocketbuildings.com. You can email Greg at greg at pocketbuildings.com. And in the We Get Around Network forum, wganforum.com, uh, any of the search boxes, just type in Pocket Buildings. You'll see uh, posts in the We Get Around Network forum, discussions already going on, and you'll see Greg active in the community, and you can just ask Greg in the in the forum as well. Uh, I actually have one more question. Is there a timeline feature? Could you give me a little bit more detail on that? Uh, this is the condition of the space. I just did a Matterport tour of it, and now we have this uh, as-built that we've created, and now we have uh, the weekly construction documentation taking place. So show me this building in construction uh, in week two, three, and four. There is not, but it's been mentioned from the very, very early days about a timeline feature or timeline function. Um, one thing that we are working on, uh, which I see it'll be part of the analytics release is going to be an activity feed. And a part of the activity feed I do see some version of timeline um, being in there. It's not a top 10 priority right now, but it certainly is on our radar. Awesome. Uh, Greg, thank you so much for being on the show today. You're welcome. Thanks. 
Uh, we've been visiting with Greg Moulton. Greg is co-founder and senior vice president of Pocket Buildings. Uh, uh, for Greg in the greater Boston area, uh, headquarters in San Francisco, but Greg is in the greater Boston area. I'm Dan Smigrod uh, in the greater Atlanta area, and uh, I am the founder of the We Get Around Network Forum. Thank you for tuning in to WGAN TV Live at 5. I think we need a little thumbs up here. I'm just so excited. We'll have a little thumbnail 